Hello, my name is Dan Colgan, and I am the organist and music guy at Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Olympia, Washington. Welcome to week eight of my devotions from the organ bench. Today is Saturday, May 9th, 2020. Today I'd like to look at the hymn Christians to the Paschal Victim, or Victime Pascali Laudus, number 371 in our ELW Red Hymnals. This is the offertory hymn used in worship tomorrow. This is one of the most ancient musical texts we have in our hymnal, attributed to Whippo of Burgundy, who died around 1050. This is a sequence hymn. We still use sequence hymns in our liturgy today. They're usually called gospel acclamations. It's that bit of liturgy right before the reading of the gospel. There used to be dozens, even hundreds of these, written for specific Sundays on specific topics. However, in the year 1570, Pope Pius V reduced the number down to four. In case you're wondering, this is one of those four, and it's only meant to be used for Easter. The other three are the Veni Sancte Spiritus, for used on Pentecost, Lauda Zion for the Feast of Corpus Christi, and the Dies Irae, which is used for All Saints, All Souls Week, as well as the Mass of the Dead. A few others were added back in the 1700s later. Back to this hymn, the presumed author, Whippo of Burgundy, was a chaplain to the Roman Emperor Conrad II. Most of what we know today about Conrad II was documented by Whippo, who kept extensive diaries, essentially biographies, of what was going on in the world politically at the time as he traveled with the emperor. After the emperor's death, he became a hermit living away from the world until his death. The text of this hymn is essentially written in three parts. In our companion to the ELW, Paul Westermeyer states that, quote, this sequence is an invitation to Christians to offer, off, to offer praises to the paschal victim who reconciles sinners to the father and in dying wrestles with death and defeats it. Mary's visit to the tomb is recounted, followed by a terse announcement of the resurrection and a characteristic prayer for mercy. Throughout the ages, this drama has been acted out many a time. The tune of this plain song melody, pulled from what's known today as plain song mode one, is essentially a chant, an 11th century German chant to be exact. It was likely sung by a choir, not a congregation, although the congregation would more have than likely have sung some of the responsorial or the repeated parts. I will admit that this is definitely one of my favorite Easter hymns. It seems to reach me for a few reasons, perhaps primarily the fact that it presents this story in a calm, factual, and in vivid terms. Oftentimes, I'll admit, to me, Easter music is just a bit too, woohoo, alleluia, it's Easter, alleluia, woohoo, and, and, to me, this is just well-constructed, and it gives a moment to pause and internalize what this story actually means, as opposed to just being happy about it. So, that's what I invite you to do this week. Take pause and digest. Internalize for a moment what Easter means to you. For me, this hymn is a great opportunity to do that, to help with that process. I once had a Lutheran pastor tell me that he always avoided this hymn because he thought it was just too Catholic. But by their nature, all pre-Reformation hymns were indeed Catholic. This is part of a rich pre-Reformation musical tradition, one that Luther himself encouraged and invited congregations to participate in. Yes, he wrote and rewrote plenty of his own music, his service liturgy and hymns, but he also spoke adamantly about how he intended to build on that musical tradition and not just throw it out. Here is the text of this that we have in our hymnal. Christians to the Paschal Victim, offer your thankful praises, a lamb the sheep redeeming, Christ who only is sinless, reconciling sinners to the Father, Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The prince of life who died reigns immortal. Speak Mary, declaring what you saw when wayfaring. The tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. 
My Lord, my hope is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, Victor King, ever reigning. Amen. In tomorrow's service recording, I did a version of this on piano, a bit of an improvisation, but not deviating, deviating from the, the written melody line. What I'll do today is play this through just the melody, just the chant, followed by a bit of a freer improvisation afterward. I hope that your week this week is pleasant, and I hope that you do take time to pause and truly internalize what this Easter season is about and what can be gained by doing so.